Generally speaking, when we are trying to find limits, we typically use something called direct substitution. Um, and if we don't end up with an indeterminate form, then that usually is what we get as the value of our limit. Sometimes, however, we do end up with something that we say is indeterminate, like zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity or any of these other different um, indeterminate forms. And if we end up with an indeterminate form, we usually have to do some sort of algebraic manipulation in order to help us evaluate our limit, ultimately using uh, direct substitution into that um, manipulated equation. Now, there's another way that we can uh, evaluate a limit if we're given a specific form of a, um, a function. And that shortcut is called L'Hopital's rule. So you, you pronounce this L'Hopital. He uh, is a French mathematician. And this shortcut helps us find uh, limits if we're given two, one of two different indeterminate forms. Um, so L'Hopital's rule says, suppose that f and g are two differentiable functions and the derivative of g is not equal to zero on some open interval. Um, and when we're finding the limit around a, so it's some interval that contains a. So if the limit as x approaches a of our quotient f divided by g gives us an indeterminate form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity, uh, when we use direct substitution, then L'Hopital's rule says we can evaluate the limit of that quotient by evaluating the limit at the same value of a of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. Now, one thing that's super important to note is these derivatives are done independently. This is not us using the chain rule, or sorry, the quotient rule. So it's not a derivative of the quotient rule. It's a derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So you take their derivatives independently. Now, the, uh, the key to this, right, is in order to use L'Hopital's rule, the limit that we're trying to evaluate must be a quotient. And it must be a quotient that when we try direct substitution gives us either the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity, one of those two indeterminate forms. Uh, I will say that the infinity over infinity can be uh, any variation of infinity divided by infinity. So it could be like positive infinity divided by negative infinity, negative divided by negative, negative divided by positive, anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how L'Hopital's rule can be useful. Um, so we're told it's hinted here that this is going to be something in an in indeterminate form of zero over zero. And we could test that, right? So if we plug in zero, we get the square root of four minus two. So square root of four is two, two minus two is zero uh, over zero. So this is a zero over zero um, form, right? So this is something that gives us zero over zero when we use direct substitution. Um, and in the first chapter, the way that we evaluated this is we used some algebra to manipulate this. So I'm going to sh first walk through the algebraic method and then show you how we could use L'Hopital's rule. So for the algebraic method, we would multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So we're going to multiply by the square root of 4 plus x uh, plus 2 on top and bottom. And that's going to allow us to evaluate this uh, directly. So the square root of 4 plus x times the square root of 4 plus x is just going to be 4 plus x. Uh, since these are differences, or since they're conjugates, right, we know that the middle terms cancel. So negative 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. And then that's all going to be divided by x times what we just multiplied by. So 4 plus x and then plus 2. And then when simplifying, these 4s are going to end up canceling. Uh, this x will cancel with that x, giving us a 1 there. And so we ultimately are evaluating the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of 4 plus x, all of that plus 2. And if we plug in 0, we can see we don't get an indeterminate form anymore, and we can evaluate. So uh, we get 1 over the square root of 4 plus 0, which is 4 plus 2. Uh, square root of 4 is 2, so we get 1 over 4. So this limit is going to be equal to 1 fourth. Now, we also have another method that we could use, which is L'Hopital's rule. 
And in this situation, we know we can use L'Hopital's rule because when we evaluated this, we got zero over zero. So that was one of the indeterminate forms that we're allowed to use. So because we are, we end up with zero over zero, we can say um, by L'Hopital's rule, by L'Hopital's rule, uh, the limit as x approaches zero of the square root of four minus x, or four, plus x minus two over x is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches zero of, if we take their derivative individually. So the derivative of the denominator is one. Um, this is like four plus x to the one half. So we take the derivative here, that's gonna be one half times the quantity four plus x. Uh, to the negative one half. And then considering the chain rule, the derivative of the inside is just one, so it's times one. And then the derivative of negative two is just zero. Uh, so we get this. So all of this is divided by one, which means we can do a little bit of simplifying. We get the limit as x approaches zero of, all of this is gonna move to the denominator because of the negative exponent. So it's gonna be one over, we already have the two in the denominator, and this is gonna be a square root. So two times the square root of four plus x. And at this point we can plug in using substitution. So we're gonna get one over two times the square root of uh, four plus zero is four. Uh, that's gonna be one over two times two, which is one fourth. And you see that we get the same result as we did here. Now in this situation, the taking the derivative, that method isn't necessarily much quicker than the other method doing it algebraically, um, but it is an alternative, right? And there will be instances where L'Hopital's rule is going to be much quicker than using any sort of algebraic manipulation. So let's look at this example. So in this example, we want to use L'Hopital's rule to find the one-sided limit. So we're finding the limit as we uh, approach zero from the right. So remember this means as we're approaching zero from uh, small numbers to the right, so small positive numbers. So we're coming in from the right side on the number line. Because if we try and plug in zero over zero, the sign of zero is zero, and then zero squared is zero. So we can see that it's one of the indeterminate forms that we are able to use L'Hopital's rule for, which means um, because it's zero over zero, we can say by L'Hopital's rule, Uh, it's going to be equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of, so the derivative of sine is cosine, cosine of x, over the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Because remember, we're taking the derivative of each individually, we're not doing the quotient rule here. Uh, so in the cosine, right, our cosine function, as x is approaching zero, um, the limit is one. On, from both sides, it's one. So as you approach zero from the right and the left, it's both approaching one. So the cosine of zero is one. And two times zero is zero. But these numbers are approaching from the right. So we're approaching zero from the right here. So it's gonna be small positive numbers. So if I plugged in like 0.1, this would be uh, 0.2. If I plugged in 0.01, it'd be 0.02, and so on. As, as I plug in numbers closer and closer to zero from the positive side, this is getting closer and closer to zero in the positive direction. And the reason why that's important is now we have a positive number divided by zero, but approaching from a positive number, so positive divided by positive. And if you recall, when we have zero in our denominator, this turns out to be a limit off to infinity. And because it's positive divided by positive, it's going to be positive infinity. So for this second one, it's the same quotient, but this time we're approaching zero from the left. So again, um, we can say if we evaluated this, we would get zero over zero, because we plug in zero, plug in zero. And then we can say um, by L'Hopital's rule, this is going to be equal to the limit as x is approaching zero from the left of, again, cosine of x divided by 2x. Plug in zero. So again, remember, Cosine as x approaches zero from both the left and the right gives us one. Think about the graph, right? The graph of cosine uh, looks something like this. 
right? Something like that. So as x is approaching zero, it's approaching one from both sides. Uh, plugging in zero here is gonna give me zero again, but again, we're approaching from the left this time. Uh, so if I use something like negative 0.1, I'd get negative 0.2 here. Negative 0.001, I'd get negative 0.002. So it's gonna be negative this time. So it's approaching zero from the left. So now we have a positive divided by a negative, and we have the zero in the denominator, which still goes off to an infinity, but in this case, it's going to go off to a negative infinity because the denominator is negative and the numerator is positive. Okay, so in this problem, we have uh, indeterminate form in the form of infinity over infinity. So if I were to evaluate this, the cosecant at pi, so the cosine is the reciprocal of the, or sorry, cosecant is reciprocal of the sine, and we know that the sine at pi is zero, so one over zero is going to be infinity. And then, um, the cotangent at pi is going to be a negative infinity. So the graph of cotangent, right, looks something like this, and it approaches a, um, or it's gonna be undefined actually here, right? So this is gonna be an infinity there, right? It's going off to infinity there. Um, so we end up with infinity over infinity. And so when we take the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we can say uh, by L'Hopital's rule, this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches pi, so the limit uh, doesn't change. We just take the derivative. So the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Uh, the derivative of one is a constant, and then the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. Now you see that we have a cosecant in common on top and bottom, and then the negative divided by negative can be positive there. So now we have uh, cotangent divided by cosecant, and let's go ahead and rewrite these in terms of sine and cosine, because uh, you'll see the cotangent is the cosine of x divided by the sine of x, and then in the denominator, the cosecant is one over the sine of x. If I were to, so we're dividing a fraction by a fraction, so I multiply by the reciprocal here. So if I multiply by the reciprocal here, right, so times, sine of x over one times sine of x over one, uh, we see that these end up canceling and those actually end up canceling. So this whole thing actually is just equal to the limit as x approaches pi of the cosine of x. And now we can just plug in, right? We can plug in. So if I plug in pi here, cosine at pi is negative one. So this whole limit is equal to negative one. All right, last example. <clears throat> so in this situation, our indeterminate form ends up being something that isn't a fraction and isn't one of the forms that we know or can use L'Hopital's rule for, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, All right? So if I plug in uh, infinity here, two times infinity is going to be uh, infinity. One over infinity is zero and the sine of zero is zero. So we end up with infinity times zero, which is an indeterminate form, but it's not one of the forms that we need. So they give us a little hint here. They say, make it a fraction. So we need this expression to be a fraction. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is um, this two, this constant multiplier, there's the limit property that says, uh, if you take the limit of C times a function, right, as x approaches a, it's equal to c times the limit as x approaches a of the function, right? So you can pull out your constant multiple here. So I'm gonna start by doing that. So I'm gonna pull out this two. So we're gonna say, um, so before we're even using L'Hopital's rule, we're just gonna be doing this manipulation. So it's two times the limit as x approaches infinity of x times the sine of one over x. So all we did is pulled out the two. Now I need this to be a quotient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this so that x is gonna be, so think about it this way, right? So if I had uh, some function times x, if I were to take this function and divide it by one over x, 
Would you agree that we get the same result here, right? Because if you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which would be multiplying by x over 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sine of 1 over x and divide it by 1 over x. And that's going to give me something that's equivalent to this. So it's 2 times the limit as x approaches infinity of the sine of 1 over x divided by 1 over x. So now we have a quotient. And if I plug in infinity here, 1 over, uh, one over, zero, uh, one over infinity is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Right? So I'm going to get a 0 here. And then 1 over infinity is 0. So I end up with 0 over 0. So when I try and evaluate this limit here, I get an indeterminate form in the way that we can use L'Hopital's rule for. So now we can use L'Hopital's rule. So by L'Hopital's rule, um, this is going to be equal to 2 times the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. OK, so derivative of sine is cosine. So we get cosine of 1 over x. So we're going to have to use chain rule here. So it's the derivative of the outside leaving the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. So 1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1. Uh, so its derivative is going to be negative 1 times x to the negative 2. So that's negative 1 over x squared. So it's going to be times negative 1 over x squared. Oof, that looks bad. Sorry, let me clean that up. Negative 1 over x squared. So that's the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of 1 over x is just what we did right here. That's negative 1 over x squared. And notice, right? Notice we have a negative 1 over x squared divided by a negative 1 over x squared. Those end up canceling, which means this is going to be equal to 2 times the limit as x approaches infinity of the cosine of 1 over x. So plug in infinity, cosine of 1 over infinity is the cosine of 0. So this is 2 times the cosine of 0. Uh, the cosine of 0 is 1. So that's 2 times 1. So this whole limit is going to end up equaling 2 here.